Hi, my name is Rolinda Simbul and I am the founder of Vijona and I'm excited to be here with the uh, FC crew. So Vijona is a youth capacity building organization founded as a 501c3 a nonprofit in California uh, with a service population um, being 7 to 17 year olds in Africa and other developing uh, nations. And our mission vision is really um, to go into the early developmental life cycle of a child and uh, give them the gift of self-discovery uh, by helping them identify who they are early in life, um, give them a practical way on how to develop uh, who they are, nurture it as they grow up, and um, how to deploy themselves, how to use that innate talent to serve the communities. Yeah, most people in life um, really never uh, get to discover who they are and this is a universal thing whether you're African, Asian or American. Um, uh, a lot of people we get into um, doing what it takes to survive but actually going into ourselves to figure out what we're innately gifted at and finding a profession that aligns with that innate talent. It's something that is pretty rare and it's universal so with that said um, I was born and raised in Cameroon, West Africa, and I know just how brilliant and resilient um, uh, Africans are because I'm one. Fortunately, uh, um, I got the privilege to travel abroad to the U.S. when I was 21 years old, and I came to this other side of the world, and I got a chance to see uh, the magic that happens when you give a child at a young age the freedom to just spark at the, and, and explore their brain early in life. So to be able to uncover who and what they are, what their talents and personality and abilities are early in life and kind of align their career path and their life goals with um, that innate talent. So, and to me, when I saw that and I realized, okay, the West has a lot of innovation, inventors, pioneers, um, their uh, you know, results of letting a child just explore their innate talent and be innovative early in life will give rise to that kind of innovation in any space. And then looking at the gap in the continent I came from, which is uh, Africa, you know, we're all human beings born with that innate talent and, and ability, but one side has the freedom to unleash it, the other side is not unleashing it because of lack, lack of information or lack of exposure so with that um, with the um, the blessing of that dual exposure for me I'm sitting here um, after going through a career in the US what can I do what can I my, me and my generation do to help the younger generation of Africans not repeat the, the same um, pitfalls that we repeated or expose them to a lot more than we got so that's when the seed of Vijona, Afri uh, Vijona um, started in my mind. So this, this to me started in a form of a seed. Um, the last semester of a Bible college I attended, uh, there was a class called mobilization. And in that mobilization class, the, the question was, uh, what is God stirring up in your heart in terms of the mission um, and purpose? So the seed that was planted out of that is um, 7 to 17 year olds in Africa. So um, and at, at that point, this was 2016, I had lived in the U.S. for 19 years straight and never been back uh, to, to Cameroon. So um, I'm sitting there thinking, okay, 7 to 17, Africa, what does that mean? Uh, realizing that I can't assume that the way I grew up in, in Cameroon is the same way 19 years later. So needed to start going back, um, needed to go back to the space where battleground is what I called it, to do research on, you know, 
they say when a seed is planted, you let it form into what it's supposed to be. So I did a lot of um, research back and forth um, in, in, in different African countries and in the process of the research, um, the mission and vision of the regional project uh, was forming, which is um, to engage uh, the need to engage that age group um, to help them identify, nurture and use their talent. So um, I believe children are like sponges, like, um, you know, they soak in the environment and whatever they're exposed to is, you know, we're a product of what, where we are, where, how we are raised and how we grow up and what we're exposed to. So um, a good example that comes to mind is we recently did a workshop in a rural township in, in Ghana. And we had this questionnaire with the kids and asked them, one of the questions on the questionnaire is, uh, who do you want to become when you grow up? And um, of about 400 and something kids in a rural township, a little village, um, they all fell under four major categories. They all wanted to be either a police officer or a soldier or a nurse or a teacher. Now, this is all they are exposed to. And um, to me, that is a lot of missed and lost uh, opportunity in that because they were all created with an innate talent. Imagine the millions, the, the amount of untapped potential that is in that little village. So here is where Vijona comes in. Uh, we go into a town, rural township like this, and we um, we help the kid go, the kids go through a self-discovery um, process. We we have the kids go through a psychometric test, um, practical questions that we ask them to help them discover who am I. And once they have identified who they are, their personalities, and um, the results come up with the top three uh, personality traits uh, based on a RACEC model, we now expose them to a wide variety of professions and entrepreneurial opportunities that are contextualized to the space they are in. And we're exposing their minds now to possibilities. So we're, we're sparked um, the mind of a child by telling them, hey, here is what your, your inherent talent and personality and abilities are. And here is a wide variety of possible uh, professions and entrepreneurial opportunities that you would never have thought of because of your limited uh, exposure. And then we give them a, a self-advocating opportunity to say, based on this list, what are you interested in? And they get to pick which one of the um, uh, professions or entrepreneurial opportunities they're interested in. Now we're bringing the child into the process of setting, setting up their life goal. So when they pick what they want, we give them practical ways on how to, okay, if you want to be a mechanic, for example, in this space, um, here are some classes, here are some tools that you want to have by the time you're 12, by the time you're 15, you're 16. So we um, guide them to us, towards a self created life plan which you know it's empowering them to take ownership of their future I will say that um, the younger generation today is dreaming bolder than we did in our generation that's for sure but there's still some societal and um, resource limitations around um, the young African uh, child today. So we still have the, the, the old misconceptions of, you know, lawyers, doctors, and, and pharmacists are the only ones that make uh, a lot of money. So um, we still have the kids feeling challenged um, in the conversation with my, my dad wants me to be this, and I actually have this passion to be this. And, and we also see, um, you know, a lot of kids saying in class, okay, I like math, uh, but, you know, behind doors, they actually love to cook. And um, so even though the world, ha uh, you know, you can earn a living and make a, a, a comfortable income for yourself with a, a, a wider range of things in the world right now, we still have those limitations um, preventing the African child from exploring uh, 
uh, really who they are. Right, so we still have a, a, a group of kids, for example, I've encountered a few kids who, who love to cook, right? Um, but they don't have an outlet for that. Um, they don't have culinary schools, they don't have, um, um, you know, outlets for them to go and actually nurture and develop that talent into something self-sufficient. And we all know in the West, like cooks and chefs make very uh, a lot of money um, as a profession. And there are also um, kids in the, in, in the art world, um, you know, acting is still not uh, that profession that everyone looks up to. Um, and I think when we were growing up, vocational things like being a mechanic or being a carpenter and all that um, we look down at those things as okay you're not smart you're not brilliant um, that oh, your parents would have money to send you to the best schools that's why you're doing that um, we have some protégés in that space now who can build something with who build things with their hands and or, or who you know can, can create amazing, beautiful pieces, but they don't have outlets uh, for that. So uh, one of the things we're, we're planning to use the Regional Africa platform is to showcase a wide variety of, um, you know, no industry restrictions on what your, what your innate talent or innovation is. You can, you can, you know, love to cook, you can love to sew, you can love to play the piano, whatever it is that you're innately gifted in. We, we want to, in, to uh, send the message to this younger generation that it's equally valuable and needed within the community. So we want to be able to showcase those. So one of the initiatives within the regional project is something we're calling uh, Vision Africa Connect. And uh, this is where we're using technology uh, to our benefit. It's a lot of schools around the, the world actually have something to call global perspective. And Vijana Connect is really um, uh, one of the items within that umbrella is a one hour uh, Google Hangout session between a child in a country in Africa and a child in a state in the US, for example, or between a child uh, sitting in a classroom in Nigeria and a child sitting in a classroom in Ghana. So you learn about a country in, in class and you get a chance to talk to someone from that country for an hour. And we piloted that um, with a school in, in Douala, Cameroon and a school in Seattle, uh, Washington. Uh, for an hour, the kids got to ask each other questions about you know, what do you do after school, what are your favorite subjects, and, and uh, other questions about each other's countries. So that breaks down misconceptions, it builds bridges, and it, 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 it just highlights our humanity, common humanity in the United States, uh, behind our race and socioeconomical upbringing. We're all humans with similar likes and, and, and desires. is actually a really beautiful rumbling. It's been going on, the rumbling has been going on across Africa, but it's actually spiraling faster now in the sense that um, if you have a mindset of, I see a problem and I wanna find a solution, Africa is a space to be right now. Like the ground is so fertile, fertile and green in a sense that a lot of things that are second nature in the western world and many other parts of the world are still pretty rural in africa and uh they look like problems and issues right now so if you can come in with a solution if you if you have a mindset of i see a problem i want a solution versus i see a problem and i complain then you can do some good damage in africa right now africa is the second largest continent in the world right now and we have the largest youth population in the world. And the youth population is gonna grow exponentially in the next few decades. The median age group in Africa is 18. And, you know, we, 
We also have this other statistic that we are the poorest and most underdeveloped continent in the world and there is a concern around this growing youth population and no jobs there. Are millions of intellectual property graduates out of universities with no jobs. The private sector is um, it's not, it's, it's, it's pretty dead. A lot of us graduate and are waiting for the government to, um, to, um, to, to employ us. So we're going to have the largest youth population in the world in the next few uh, decades across Africa. The private sector is not growing as much as it should be. Um, so Vijona Africa, um, our goal, how we're planning for the future is we want to go in in the early life cycle of a child to empower them to look in, into themselves and bring out that innate inherent talent and empower them to know that they don't just have to work for someone but they can actually nurture and develop what they have and become entrepreneurs themselves that they start creating jobs. So we want to come in along that bubble of large youth population and, and help prevent un the employment rate by empowering kids to, to tap and bring out the best in them and become pioneers, innovators, uh, so that when we get to this large youth population, hopefully um, they are not just intellectually smart, but they are also holistically smart because they have figured out early in life that they don't have to rely just on the government for employment, they can actually employ themselves. And um, another message we're sending to the kids early in life is, you know, just love this, the, there's nothing like home, right? And we've heard about the brain drain out of Africa years and years, but we actually have natural resources and the intellect to do a lot of good within our space. So our message to the young African is, you know, love the space you're in, use the resources within you and around you to build who and what you want to become and stay within Africa. So hopefully um, reduce the brain drain out of Africa. We have a goal to give millions and millions of kids between seven and 17 year old in Africa and also around the globe. Um, the gift of self-discovery early in life and for $30 a child um, you can give give a child the gift of self-discovery early in life um, and set them on a path to living a life of passion so we do have um, a website it's uh, www.vijonaafrica.org um, we are this is a pilot year for us and we're piloting in three countries, Cameroon, Nigeria, and Ghana. And um, we're inviting, this is a community, it takes a village to raise a child, like they say. And um, part of our project is not just working with the kids, but we're also engaging parents, teachers, and the community to make this a holistic, you know, whoever has an influence on the kids to be part of the project. So we're inviting you, um, if you wanna be part of, um, that community that gives a child the gift of self-discovery. For $30, you can actually um, uh, bless a child and set them up for life. Or if you want to do a, a campaign and uh, work within your communities and do a fundraiser to raise um, uh, funds to, to um, gift 125 kids the gift of self-discovery, um, you can also do that. So um, you can do donations on our website. Annually, we're going to do uh, uh, a black tie gala, the one this year is scheduled for December 7th. And this is where we get to showcase all the amazing work and the impact um, that the project um, has had for the year. So you can uh, plan to save that date and join us in Santa Ana, California, um, December 7th is a way of supporting. Another way you can actually get involved on the project is to uh, come alongside with us. We do workshops in different countries, in rural and urban settings across Africa. So you can volunteer uh, to come on a short trip with us and get a chance to gift um, a few kids the gift of self-discovery and um, the life life goal. Um, and uh, you can find more information about that coming on our website as well.
just want to say a big thank you to um, Fatal Cut for this interview. I always get excited um, to, to, you know, do partner interviews like this. Um, I believe that our continent, the continent of Africa, um, together we can. There are, we have brilliant minds around the world. And when we collaborate together like this to, you know, shed a light on critical things that are going on within our continent or critical things that we can do together, um, it's always exciting. So I appreciate you guys having me and Vijona on, on your platform to highlight what we're doing. And I um, uh, wish you guys success and I uh, am looking forward to being back here with you in the future, hopefully. And um, just a last call out to, to everyone listening, you know, we can do, we need millions and millions of, I'm going to say millions, we need hundreds and hundreds of initiatives like this, like Vijona going into the continent of Africa. Um, we, it's good to come out into the world and learn things from the world, but there's nothing like going back to your roots and giving back and helping your root develop one way or another. I know a lot of us say uh, things not going right in the continent right now, but if not us going in and championing that change, um, who else can? So this is just my little call out to Africans in the diaspora saying our continent, it's a beautiful rumbling happening. Let's get on the bandwagon and, and um, help to charge that forward. Thank you for having me and bye for now.